Welcome to Letters to Rising Leaders. It's a podcast series about God, soul, love, and leadership. And I'm your host, Tom Moore. For those of you joining along in my book, Letters to Rising Leaders, this is week 39, and the topic is community, charity. It's the second podcast where we've taken up the subject of community building. This time, we're focused on acts of charity. Acts of charity are acts of love. They're lived out love for our neighbors, for those in need that are around us. And this is, this is God's call for us, right? He's created us interconnected. God is the maker and giver of all. He's continuously making heaven and earth and continuously giving new life to our world. It is on us as his hands and feet to strengthen those bonds. And we do so in charity. In past podcasts, I've talked about the, that image of a ladder, right? That I call the disciplines of goodness ladder. The foundational step is piety, our relationship with God. And in our piety, we become more conscious of our interconnectedness. And that leads us to decency and then to civility. And then as our circles of care widen and we begin to see more and more needs around us, that motivates us to acts of charity. Charity then on from there, the fifth rung democracy and diplomacy and sustainability, all even wider circles of care. But right in the middle there, on the fourth step of the ladder, is charity. I think I've mentioned previously that three years after my mom died, uh, my dad remarried, and it created a Brady Bunch family. There were three uh, of us and three uh, from my new mother's side of the family, and that created a family with uh, my sister, Debbie Sue, nine days older than me. I had a sister, Debbie Ann, too, uh, two Debbies in the family. So we had two brothers uh, two months apart. You know, we were a blended family. We were quite competitive, Debbie Sue and I. Um, but I remember one day, uh, Debbie Sue had participated in a walkathon in Toronto. And dad was getting ready to get in the car to go pick her up. And he asked me if I wanted to come along. And I decided to do so. So we drove up to the city. She had been on this walkathon called Miles for Millions. And it was an event to raise money for underprivileged children in countries all around the world. And I remember we arrived at the pickup spot and were waiting there for her. And finally, I saw her in the distance emerging from the crowd. She saw our car and came, began to walk over. And she was limping. And uh, her you know, legs were almost seizing up. She had just walked over 30 miles for children in lands far, far away. Now, at this point in my life, I was in a pretty self-centered place. And here was my nine-day-older-than-me sibling, who was showing me what charity looked like. And it struck me, and I've never forgotten that. My parents, my dad and mom, modeled what it means to be givers. They were always involved in something from a charitable point of view. Dad was a scoutmaster, a Rotarian, a lay leader in our church. Mom was a girl guide leader and a volunteer librarian. And their example stuck with us. My, my sister Sharon has been active for years in charities, especially in support of sustainability. My sister Debbie Ann, who lives in Calgary, Alberta, and her family helped co-found Youth Center of Calgary, which serves underprivileged youth from ages 9 to 15, especially in the hours right after school. Before he was diagnosed with the cancer that took his life, my brother David worked side by side with his wife, Amber, in the founding of, of Roundup for Nolansville, which is a charity supporting the needy in and around Nolansville, Tennessee, with basic necessities, that kind of thing. 
Just recently, I learned on a phone call with my brother, Doug, that he's playing around with the idea of a public service campaign to encourage people to reduce screen time and reclaim their connection with people in the world around them. There's needs all around us, and we're called to respond. And I suspect that if I were to ask about your family or your friends, you'd be able to tell me about all the different charitable acts that they're involved with. And we're all encouraged to do the same, right? Jesus has no hands or feet but ours. He has planted in our hearts a purpose meant just for us. He calls upon us to tune into that purpose. And then, as needs expose themselves to us, for us to respond. Because in every charitable act, we're touching a real human being with a face and a name. And as we do, as we give, we also receive. Because, of course, it's all reciprocal. And as we journey together with others through acts of charity, it enables us to rise to the better angels of our natures, to become leaders of goodness in the world, and to be contributions on behalf of God. The song for this week is on this topic. It's called Give, Give, Give. Robert Berry joins me on instrumentals and Martha Hawkinson in harmony. Enjoy. Give, give, give. See her begging in the cold. Give, give, give. See him struggle to stay sober. Give, give, give. See the child in her hunger. Give, give, give. See the pain of growing old. Give, give, give. Give, give, give. Step outside. So love 
Give, give, give. Give, give, give. Step outside and live. Well, that's it for today. I hope you'll join us next week for the next episode in this Letters to Rising Leaders podcast series. As I say each week, leader of goodness, go in faith to love and heal the world.